If you want to understand why some people maintain independence into their 90s while others need help with basic tasks in their 70s, just look at their muscle mass. Muscle isn't just about looking fit or being strong. It literally determines whether you can live independently in old age. There's a really powerful study from the BMJ that tracked over 5,000 adults aged 65 and older for nearly a decade. They found that those in the lowest quartile for muscle strength had more than double the mortality compared to those in the highest quartile. Let me just say that again. Weak muscles doubled the risk of dying during the study period. Muscle mass is one of the strongest predictors of longevity that we have. Think of muscle loss, what we call sarcopenia, like a slow leak in a car tire. You don't notice it day to day, but over months and years, the pressure drops until suddenly the tire can't support the car anymore. Without intervention, you lose about 8 to 10% of your muscle mass per decade after the age of 30. By your 80s, you could have lost 40 to 50% of what you once had. That 92 year old dancer likely maintained hers because she never stopped moving and challenging her muscles. When you lose muscle, you lose the physical capacity to catch yourself if you trip. Falls become more likely as a result and fractures become catastrophic because there's no muscle cushion protecting your bones. Recovery from any illness becomes harder as well because muscle is your metabolic reserve. It's what your body draws on during stress or illness. If you don't have muscle to spare, then even minor setbacks become major problems. But muscle does something else that's crucial for longevity. It acts like a sponge for blood sugar, which I mentioned earlier. After you eat, glucose from your meal should get absorbed by your muscles and either used immediately or stored for later. When you have good muscle mass, you have plenty of storage capacity. When you've lost muscle mass, glucose stays in your bloodstream for longer, eventually contributing to insulin resistance and diabetes. This creates a vicious cycle where muscle loss worsens metabolic health, which then makes it even harder to maintain muscle. The primary cause of sarcopenia is simple. It's disuse. It's not using your muscles. At the end of the day, your body is efficient. If you're not regularly using your muscles against resistance, your body decides that they're expensive to maintain and it breaks them down. This is why walking on its own just isn't enough. Walking is excellent for your cardiovascular health, but it doesn't provide enough challenge to prevent muscle loss, especially in your upper body and your core. You need resistance training, movements where your muscles work against significant weight or resistance. Research shows that even people in their 90s can build muscle through resistance training. Studies in nursing homes have demonstrated many times meaningful strength gains in residents in their late 80s and 90s who'd never lifted weights before. The capacity to respond doesn't disappear with age, though the response may be slower and require more consistent effort or guidance. Now, something I've mentioned before is grip strength, which has become recognized as an incredibly powerful health marker. Numerous studies show that weak grip strength predicts higher mortality, more cardiovascular disease, greater hospitalization risk, and worsening cognitive function. This isn't because your hands are magical, it's because grip strength reflects your overall muscle mass. If your grip is weak, your whole body is likely weak as well. In the blue zones, older adults maintain functional strength through daily activities that naturally load their muscles. Things like gardening, walking on hilly terrain, carrying water or firewood, or any manual work. As well as that, protein intake becomes critically important as you age because your body becomes less efficient at using protein to build muscle. Older adults need more protein than younger people, roughly 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight. For a 70 kilo person, that's 84 to 112 grams of protein per day. Now, most older people that I see eat nowhere near this amount. They might have toast for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch, and a modest portion of meat at dinner, totaling maybe 50 or 60 grams. That's simply not enough to maintain muscle. The timing matters too. Your body responds best to protein when you eat at least 20 to 30 grams in a single meal. Spreading tiny amounts across the day is less effective. 
And if you're trying to lose weight, your protein needs actually increase because your body is more likely to break down muscle for energy when calories are restricted. Losing weight while eating inadequate protein guarantees that you'll lose precious muscle alongside fat, which is a disaster. The practical message here is clear. Resistance training is non-negotiable for healthy aging. It doesn't mean you need a gym membership or fancy equipment. Body weight exercises, resistance bands, carrying heavy shopping, even gardening with proper form, all of these count if they challenge your muscles. Start with what you can do now and gradually progress. The 92-year-old didn't get there by accident. She got there by using her body consistently for decades. Every year you delay is muscle that you'll struggle to recover later. The best time to start was 30 years ago, but the second best time 